Hi, my pre-algebra students. This is Mrs. McPhee. Um, as promised, I'm going to do two of the problems from our homework tonight on multiplying powers to a power. You're doing a good job building on what we were talking about last week when we were multiplying and dividing with the same base, and now we're just kicking that up to the next level. So problem 17, I'm going to look at as two separate problems. That's that math practice seven, where we break problems into smaller steps. So my first problem here, I'm going to leave alone for now. I just have negative 3 times a to the third times n to the fourth. And then I have a similar monomial, but the 4 is now on the outside of the parentheses. So what that means is that this value is actually going to be repeated, multiplied four extra times. And if you wanted, you could do the strategy we learned today, where you can multiply your power to your power. And if you're not quite seeing that yet, feel free to write it out. So you could write this out as negative 3a to the third times n, negative 3a to the third times n, negative 3a to the third times n, and then negative 3a to the third times n. That's what this means. I'm going to take my original monomial and bring it down, negative 3a to the third, n to the fourth. And then let's look at what I have. I have negative 3 to the fourth power, or negative 3 times negative 3, which is 9. Negative 3 times negative 3, which is 9. 9 times 9 is 81. Now let's look at my a's. If I do my power to a power, 3 times 4, I'm going to get 12. If I want to count it out, I have a to the third, and then another a to the third, a to the sixth, another a to the third, which is a to the ninth, another a to the third, a to the twelfth. So your power to your power works out. Writing it out so you can see your a's gives you the same solution. And then our n, power to a power, 1 times 4, our exponent will be 4. Or, how many n's are we multiplying? 1, 2, 3, 4 n's, n to the 4th. Now we can go ahead and finish this problem. Negative 3 times 81 is negative 243. And again, I know that so quickly because I've been teaching longer than you've been alive. Feel free at any point to write down these problems. Don't try to do too much work in your heads. I have a when I multiply. With the same base, I can add the exponents, so a to the 15th. And then n, when I multiply with the same base, I can add the exponents, and I get n to the 8th. And that is my simplified answer for number 17. Really nice job. Some of our classes, we were able to start number 18. Some classes, I think we were able to finish. But for the benefit of everybody, let's also do number 18. And this was negative 3 times 2x, and that monomial is to the fourth power. And then we're going to multiply that by 4x to the fifth y, and that monomial is going to be to the second power. So again, I'm going to look at this as three separate problems. And if you want, you can even write it out. I have negative 3 times 2x to the fourth. So 2x times 2x times 2x times 2x. That's 2x to the fourth. 4x to the fifth y squared, which means I'm going to write my 4x to the fifth y two times. This one might be easier for you to see why this rule works, this power to a power, if we write everything out. All right, so let's start multiplying our coefficients. 4 times 4. 16 times 2 is 32, times 2 is 64, times 2 is 128, times 2 is 256, times 3, and I did the math ahead of time, this one I did not know in my head, is negative 768, and that's your coefficient. Let's look at your exponent for x. I have x to the first times 4, so that's x to the fourth. x to the fifth times 2 is x to the tenth. So I should have x to the fourteenth. But let's check. 
x to the fifth, and x to the fifth is x to the tenth, x to the eleventh, twelfth, thirteenth, x to the fourteenth. Remember at any time, if you don't see an exponent next to your variable, you could write that one. Sometimes it just helps focus our brains a little bit. And then don't forget our y's. We have y once, twice, so that should be y to the second. And again, if we do a power to a power, one times two gives us two. Take your time with these problems. Look for ways that you can simplify the parts and then combine your parts at the end. You're doing a really good job with this. And we'll talk about it more tomorrow. See you. Bye.